I come from Butuan City, the regional center of Caraga. I am proud of my place and my home. But this young region where I come from is still relatively unfamiliar to most Filipinos. Caraga, the youngest region in the country. It was created through Republic Act 7901 on February 23, 1995. It was known as an administrative region for less than two decades, but its historical traces will bring you back a thousand years, even before our country got its name as the Philippines. I'm Toby Chu. Join me to discover the images of Caraga, its tourism beyond destination. Discover Caraga and experience everything it has to offer from the beauty of nature as well as the history and culture of the people. From Butuan City, let's head southward en route to the province of Surigao del Sur, home to pristine beaches, waterfalls, and rivers. Located deep within the forest of Borbo Anan in Bislig City, this majestic view you see right behind me is the Tinoy and Falls. Look at that, 55 meters high and 95 meters wide, it is one of the widest waterfalls in the country. The people around here say that this is the Little Niagara Falls of the Philippines. Kadi kamu nga di isang kanami tinuyan nga di sa Bislig City. Madayaway gayad ang kanami tinuyan. Mahusay. Dali kamu nga di. 90 minutes from the city of Bislig is the Enchanted River. Tourists are encouraged to arrive at the river before feeding time to watch the beautiful fishes swim towards the surface. Hey guys, located just a few minutes away from the town of Hinatuan in Surigao del Sur is the Enchanted River. Everything that they say about this place is true. It is an amazing river. As you can see behind me, the Blue and Emerald Green River is a result of the spring water and the Pacific Sea merging together underneath a crevice. The folks around here believe that there are spirits dwelling underneath the river. That's why it's called Enchanted. They also say that no one has reached the bottom of this 80 meter deep river yet. Panghambung lang nako sa Enchanted River, ang tubig lang yun niya, very clear. Niya, doon na siya sa kulog ng tubig, na i-blow o green. Maroon na yung panghambung nako, nga bug na po siya. That is water. Even though Caraga region is still relatively unknown to many, it has not been far behind from other tourist destinations in the country in terms of natural resources.
panorama of different sceneries will entice you to discover more. From the wonders of the cascading waterfalls, to the clear rivers, down to the blue-green ocean, Caraga is a pleasant surprise and a welcome treat for travelers looking for a fresh new place to visit. Charles Lindbergh, an American aviator, tagged the Caguay Beach as the Waikiki Beach of the Philippine Islands. Are you ready for our next adventure? We are going to tour around the different islets of Britannia. Tourists come over this place to discover its striking landscape, its pristine waters, and its powdery white sand. The Britannia group of islets in San Agustin of Surigao del Sur, a total of 24 islets, captivates travelers with their unspoiled beauty. Fine, bright, and soft white sand enchants your feet while walking around these islets on an island hopping tour. Guys, the sand here is really, really soft. I can feel my feet sink into it with each step that I take. To the north of the province of Surigao del Sur is Tandag City. Scenic panoramas of greeneries along the way makes you appreciate the everyday living of the locals in a peaceful, relaxed pace. This is how we describe the real image of the province. Here in the Twin Linungao Island in Tandag lies a bat sanctuary, which serves as the daytime resting area for bats that travel to and from the neighboring town of San Miguel. Tadi kamu sa Surigao del Sur, libod kamu sa Tandag City. Among the best features Caraga has to offer to sightseers are the beautiful waterscapes, islands, rivers, falls, and lakes. The widest river in the Philippines is the Agusan River. It flows along the most occidental parts of Caraga region and out to the ocean in Butuan Bay. The deepest lake in our country is also found in Caraga. Lake Mainit is bounded with the municipalities from Agusan del Norte and Surigao del Norte. Lake Mainit is not hot as its name implies. The folks around here say that a portion of the lake is covered by the municipal of Mainit and that's how it got its name. Now a few trivia of the place. Lake Mainit is the fourth largest lake in the Philippines and the second largest in Mindanao. It's 223 meters deep, making it the deepest lake in the Philippines. Tawan Echo Park has an amazing landscape and a panoramic view of Lake Mainit. It has an elevation of 150 meters above the lake and the entire area is comprised of 477 hectares of forest land. This area is surrounded with exotic and secondary grown trees and lately this place is declared as the regional nursery by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Well, I'm here in 
the Philippines for almost five years and I tried starting to surf three years ago and I started it here in Lanuza and the waves are pretty good and I have a lot of good experience here. And This is the Herrera Ancestral Home. It was built on May 28, 1898 as a business residence of Gabriel Herrera, the first mayor of Cantila. About 40 minutes from Hayangabon Port, we journey to another tropical island setting. Crystal clear waters, Cool breeze and bright skies greet every traveler on the way to the enchanting Sohotan of Bukas Grande in Surigao del Norte. The islands of Caraga offer a different and exciting activity in each place you visit. In Bukas Grande, a few minutes track will take you to the Crystal Cave and Bolitas Cave. This crystal cave showcases stalactites and stalagmites that glitter when light is shined upon them. The boat rides show us the wonders of nature in Bukas Grande. There are a total of 13 inland lakes, but only three of these are accessible. One of these is Lake Tiktikan, where the calm waters are surrounded by foliage. It's interesting to learn about the way of life of the locals who get to live in and experience this beautiful paradise every day. Carved wood artwork immediately catch your attention at the cottage overlooking Lake Tiktikan. A native of Bukas Grande made these intricate artwork. It's surprising to learn that he started to make them out of boredom. May dugay dun ako na mga 30 years pa carve sa diri sa amo ang klasing ang mga kahoy nga gigamit sa amo. Dun ay gigamit, gitawag o hamunyaon o mulabi sa uban tawag o magpunyo. The furniture ko diha sa Socorro, mas daghan ang ang carving ang mga tao. Many of his artwork are now displayed not just here, but also in some points of the neighboring islands such as Chargao Island. To enter Sohotan Cave, we have to pass a 60-meter wide gate bordered by rock formation. This entrance can only be accessed during low tide. According to the tour guide, only local boatmen who have explored the area can guide the boats going inside Sohotan. This is the Hagukan Cave. At 10 in the morning, when the tide is low, it creates a vacuum, making this cave sound like it's snoring. In the native language, Hagok means to snore. Bukas Grande, with a total of 70 hectares, has been declared a protective area by the national government. Great adventures must have a challenge, so here it is. 
getting into a one root cave. Once you get into this cave, there's no other way out but to jump over a 15 footer diving board. Now we're gonna climb up and once we've reached the top, there's no way to go down but to dive. If you guys want to relax and rejuvenate for your next adventure, be sure to stop over for a unique, mild, and soothing taste of cinnamon tea. Only available here in Cinnamon Island. This is Sohorton and it's one of the best places in Karaga. Now done with the Salt and Cove adventure, next stop is the Jellyfish Sanctuary. According to the boatman, there are three types of jellyfish in this area. There's white jellyfish, there's also the brown jellyfish, and there's a yellow jellyfish. The northeastern tip of Mindanao lies Shargao Island, dubbed as the surfing capital of the Philippines. Gigantic waves curling to a perfect shape of nine makes Shargao Island a popular destination for surfers around the globe. This island bested many international surfing sites. An international surfing competition is held here each year during the month of September. Going back to the economic capital of Caraga region, Butuan City is considered as one of the fast-rising cities in our country. It is also known as a historic city, with archaeological artifacts that prove it was a thriving kingdom over a thousand years ago. I was fortunate to learn more about the rich history of my hometown from our brilliant local historian and writer, Mr. Greg Pontiveros. I'm here to interview Sir Greg Hontiveros. He is the president of the Butuan City Heritage Society. And he is also the author of the book Butuan of a Thousand Years. There's a popular saying among Butuanans that 
before, um, there was no Philippines, but there was already Butuan. And that is evident through the Balangay boats and the archaeological findings that we've uncovered. Uh, so, Sir Hontiveros, mm. what inspired you to write this book? Well, uh, I'm a writer, basically. I was engaged in uh, community journalism for a long time. But uh, it's something like this. No? I, I really plan to write a book, a lengthy piece, but uh, eventually I had to settle on a subject. And uh, I thought uh, history would be one, one subject which uh, would appeal to me. I've always been a history buff. But uh, it was only after 1975 that there were so much discoveries done on Butuan. A major trading harbor. Then about a thousand years ago, it had traded with China. Uh, so until uh, 1250 AD, it has been like that. One of the major products that was sold by Butuan, which is gold, continued to be an item that was uh, in high demand, but the supply has been going down for quite a number of years already. So during the Spanish era has substantial evidences to prove that in fact the first mass was made was done in, in Butuan. No? Very crucial because it's the first recorded Christian act in this country. No? This one. And then by the year 2021 we shall be celebrating the 500 years of the evangelization of the church in the Philippines. Uh, the first and probably only uh, Christian country in Asia, so this is a very, very, very important consideration as an identity of our nation. So, of course, Butuan, without doubt, without any controversy, was also the site of the first church in Mindanao. Guys, this is the Banzai Church Ruins. It is said to be the oldest stone church here in Mindanao, and it can only be found here in Butuan City. Uh, 1,000 years ago, we've been trading already with China. Uh, we have been exporting our gold with our porcelain through the Balanghai. Now, when Balanghai now has become our focal point in our history. Now, what will be the uh, thing that Butuan has to do? Well, uh, there should be a... Uh, parang sabay natin to lahat. Okay. Um, we're improving on our economy and uh, streamlining yung, yung business and licensing. It will be easier for investors to come. Uh, second, the uh, transparency and good governance. Mas madali ngayon magnegosyo sa Butuan City. Third, uh, working on the peace and order. Because without peace, there, there's no development. That's another prong. Uh, fourth is we want Butuan to be the convention hub of uh, Mindanao for, for conventions, of course. That's another thing. And working on PPP, a public-private partnership, to help us in the infrastructure because tourism is also infrastructure. And this time, um, the committee chair on the tourism, uh, Councillor Sami, is working closely with the uh, different agencies of the government in, in the local scene to work on the development of a river uh, waterways, no? Uh, in consonance with the, uh, because Balanghay is both, diba? So we also would like to develop the what uh, waterways, and this will be our focal point, like from both like in waterways and then uh, Gusan River. So, sabay ito lahat. You cannot, you cannot just develop tourism and expect that tomorrow there will be investors to come. No. Those people who will be attending the conventions and those businessmen will now be our clients for our tourism. And I think that's the only way we can harness our tourism through history. Allow me to inform you that the city of Butuan since time has uh, started uh, as a city, it is already perceived or 
there is already an impression that uh, based on history, it is an ancient kingdom. Uh, we have been uh, advocating when there was no Philippines, there was but one. And that by itself uh, will uh, supposed to be aroused curiosity that there is indeed more in, in Butuan historically. We have also discussed about uh, certain barangays coming up with uh, specific uh, product and put up uh, coffee shops with, uh, uh, like, like for instance, a, a, a coffee where a Korean investor would like to, to invest somewhere in a, the higher uh, barangay uh, having a 1,600 uh, elevation from, from the sea level and establish a coffee, coffee shop and uh, other amenities for, for tourists. Also on organic uh, agriculture, vegetables, etc. We also plan to establish in Barangay Salvacion and then uh, again, a uh, sort of a restaurant, uh, a place to go for those uh, who are conscious of uh, wellness. Mm -hmm. And this uh, organic uh, uh, products is not only of Philippine organic uh, knowledge, but also of international uh, adaptation. Butuan City is the only place that has about 70 kilometers stretch when it comes to to uh, river rivers. So my plan really actually is to really promote Butuan City, just like in Europe, the next Venice, Butuan, the next Venice in the Philippines, and it's going to be in Butuan. We had a tour, river cruise tour with with some of the of the residents from Butuan who are also very uh, interested to, to, to promote the river. Uh, actually, actually we, we asked some assistance from, from che CHESA, the, uh, it's a uh, Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone, no? CHESA, I'm sorry, CHESA. Uh, we also have some plans to put per kilometer a, a, a something that when a tourist will come in that rivers with the cruise, we have something to show, like the making of of the of the wine, that's known as the uh, laksoi. We have that here with wine. In fact, uh, we are also planning to have a a, a floating restaurant, no, or that can tour around the, the visitors coming from from other places. I am here in the Laksoy Wine Distillery, located in Barangay Babag, Butuan City. Interesting fact, when Magellan and his crew arrived here, this was the type of wine that was served to them. In Antonio Pigafetta's lexicon, he coined this term as the Tuba Nyonipa. Guys, interesting trivia. If you actually add mud to the Laksoy or Nipa fruit, it actually boosts or improves the quality of the Laksoy wine that it produces. Here in Barangay Bonbon lies the ancient Bekebel shell midden. Now, carbon dating shows that these freshwater shells used to be the primary food source of the people who inhabited this area during the Neolithic period, over 7,000 years ago. Ang pagkain lang nila dito is yung ano lang, yung laman ng kabibi, which uh, the, the kabibis was uh, gathered by those uh, unseen people dyan sa ilog na yan. Ngayon, yung ilog, yun ang the original Agusan River dito. Caraga has also preserved historical places, such as the Atega ancestral home built 108 years ago. When you walk in the wide wooden doors of this old Spanish colonial mansion, the faint noise of your feet against the crackly steps seem to take you back in time. The Atega residence was built in 1904 
completed by a revolutionary leader, Don Andres Ortega, the succeeding year. Since then, its prominence has stood the test of time, 108 years to be exact. The Ortega family has kept a diligent eye in preserving the home's original beauty. They have a sprawling living room space with some of the house's original furniture still used in the present day. The Ortega ancestral house is one of the best of its kind in Agusan and probably one of Kabadbaran's best kept secrets. We have organized store guides, we have organized store operators, and these are our arm, these are our assistants, assistants in, uh, in, giving, in giving information to our local government until such time that we could connect to them and until such time that they would understand why is tourism industry important in their local. We encourage private sectors especially, investors especially, but investors to classify and to be more to be more specific. What we wanted are the local investors to understand because unless and until the local investor will understand and they will invest in their own locality, that's the only time that we will succeed. We are planning our uh, product, uh, like for example, the product development. And then after that, we go to marketing, we are, planning, we are doing some marketing. And then lastly, this accreditation thing, this is the new, the new thing that we are trying to implement this time. This is under our new law, which is RA 9593, that all hotels and restaurants for that matter, and all primary tourism related establishments should be accredited. We have the different potentials in every city and every province, and of course, we have a very varied destination. Again, if I may repeat, we have a nature destination, we have a historical destination, cultural and heritage, adventure, sports, and of course our beaches and of course our beautiful icon in those parts and other parts of Karate region. And I would like to let them feel that when they come, they are a tourist, but when they go home, they are our friends. That's the kind of people we have in Canada. From road trips to boat rides, traveling around Caraga was truly an unforgettable adventure. White sand beaches, blue-green rivers, coves where you can swim with the jellyfish, the natural resources of Caraga region can rival the popular tourist spots in the country. Plus more, the historical and archaeological treasures in my hometown of Butuan make it a unique learning while traveling experience. It is definitely tourism beyond destinations. <laughs>